And I look in the mirror and I go, what the hell did you do? Did I build this character up so big that I'm stuck with him for the rest of my life? From celebrated Olympian to her gender identity transformation. I had all these things going through my head. Caitlyn Jenner opens up about her journey. I think when I first came out, I thought I could have a big impact. And slowly throughout the years, I've found that very difficult to do. Her fight for trans rights. We lose a trans woman of color, one every two weeks to murder. Her growing family. Yeah, I got 18 grandchildren and 10 children. And her stunning admission. Near the end, I was thinking of suicide. Caitlyn Jenner, welcome to the show. Hey, it's my pleasure, Carlos. I can't believe it. You look fabulous, by the way, Carlos. How are you? Good. Where are you today? Where? Where's your office? I'm, up, I'm up in the Bay Area. I'm in uh, Mountain View, if you know where that is. Well, I spent four years training in San Jose, right after all the big sprinters were there, you know? Um, yeah, where it was Speed City, I came in it made it decathlon city. What is the most interesting thing you've learned uh, since since transitioning and since becoming Kate? I think when I first came out, my heart was in the right place. I think I thought I could do a lot more than I could do for the community. I think I had very high expectations of we need to change the world. And I felt I was, you know, in a position where maybe I could have a big impact. And slowly throughout the years, I've found that very difficult to do. At first, I really tried hard politically to make a difference, started my own foundation. And I just, as time went on, I just kind of got more and more disappointed. I think the most important thing I can do today is be visible, is just be out there. I don't want people in, in my community or young people to think that if they do transition or they do live their life authentically, that my life's gonna be over with, everybody's gonna hate me and this and that. I want them to know that you gotta pick your friends, find the right people to hang out with and be a good person, be a responsible citizen, and you can do this. I have to say today that my life is so simple today. Honestly, I just get up and be myself all day. And I want people to see that. I want young people to see that because I, I really want to change the next generation coming up. It's interesting and maybe a little sad for me to hear you say that you've gone from feeling like you could make a big difference to feeling like maybe you can't. What's happened that's made you maybe less optimistic about the impact you could have? Well, a year ago, live in my shoes for a day because <laughs> I was hammered because I've always been more on the Republican side than I have the Democrats. Do you regret voting for President Trump? Uh, I don't agree with everything he's doing. And there, there are some things that I think he's done is very good. Um, uh, what? You know, this... <laughs> we live in a, in, a, in a time of social media where everybody's got a platform. Now, I would love that everybody's got a platform to do some good, you know, but a lot of times they use that platform and not in the way I would like them to use it, but uh, just it makes it, it makes it very difficult because they can attack you, they can come after you. It came to the point where I just said, I got to back out of it. And I never felt like I deserved it, but you know, Everybody makes mistakes and you just try to do the best job you possibly can. That's all you can do. So for the last year, I, honestly, I haven't talked politics. I don't want to talk politics. I certainly follow it very closely, but I've kind of just, let's stay out of this thing. You know, it's just, it's a no win situation. Interesting. So you think it's all the Trump stuff that has made it noisy and hard for you to have the same kind of impact maybe you wanted to have in the, tra in the trans community. First of all, uh, I didn't support Trump. I've always been on the Republican side and he was our candidate. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? And unfortunately, as time goes on and the years go by and everything, it was just, it became very difficult. You know, one of the things I saw that the, the conversation you tried to help have or at least you were involved in, was the conversation about black trans lives. You probably have 
some really interesting perspective when it comes to race. As someone who competed in the Olympics, I assume a lot of your teammates uh, were black and were people of color. I know you've got wonderful grandchildren who who are mixed. But but talk to me a little bit about that question of race in the trans community and, and where that plays out and how you've thought about it. Well, uh, first of all, I love everybody. <laughs> I have, I don't care what the color of your skin is it or what this, that. Fortunately in my family, uh, somewhat, I get, I, I get along so well with Kanye. I love him to death. We have some of the greatest conversations, you know, I mean, really good people. Lamar, when Chloe was with Lamar, I mean, we had great time, great fan. So I don't really care about all of that type of stuff. I just care about your character and you're a good person. And in the case, are you going to treat my daughter really well? or my son really well, whatever it may be, that's by far the most important thing. So within the trans community, um, trans community suffers from economic hardships by far, discrimination, housing discrimination. We lose a trans woman of color. Up to this point, it's been about one every two weeks to murder. And most of those murders go unsolved. I got the white privilege, you know, I'm successful, I'm a celebrity, you know, everything. I, I got all these things. And I was hoping that I could use all of these things. What can I do when using my platform to be a voice to help other platforms that need help? Caitlin, what do you think would have happened if you had not come out? Uh, near the end, uh, I was very, I think I won one incident in particular was thinking of suicide. Um, I can see how people can get to that point. Um, and then the next day after thinking that, I, I was going for a walk through this field and said, oh my God, that was so stupid. Why would you silence your voice? If you're smart, maybe you can make a difference. Maybe you're gonna have this loud voice that can make a difference. And that's worth staying around for, you know? Even if it doesn't work out and people hate your guts. Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. And what made you decide to do the YouTube channel in the first place? I, I live in the most social media family in the world. I can literally sit on my couch and reach a half a billion people. I was never really into social media that much. And then I finally started an Instagram account when I came out, as soon as the cover of Vanity Fair came out. Actually, I broke a world record. <laughs> the fastest to uh, 1 million followers on Twitter. Obama had it at five hours and like 23 minutes. I did it in four hours and three minutes to wow. 1 million. And so during this pandemic, you're sitting around doing absolutely nothing. I mean, how much golf can you play? You know, I mean, so I started thinking, uh, my daughters, they have a YouTube channel and this and that. So I started talking to them. Anyway, during the pandemic, I just says, I got to do something. I'm going to start my own channel, do my own thing. I just did last week. I did a show after I got done with Keeping Up. I did a show, I Am Kate, after I came out. And we did two seasons. And I had uh, five other trans girls and we hopped on a bus and we took it around the country dealing with these issues. And these girls who have been in the community for a long time, me, I've been in it two weeks, you know, I had a lot to learn and they couldn't learn it any better than from them. And they were so great and we had so much fun. Anyway, we had uh, four of them here uh, the other night for dinner and we sat around and talked about the show and all the things that we so enjoyed about doing with it and the camaraderie we made between all of us. And I think uh, we're editing that show right now. I think that's going to be a really fun show. I think a lot of people are really interested in what happened to all the girls from IMK. Where are they today? Have your daughters taught you anything? Have they, uh, have they weighed in yet? They were all very complimentary. And they all said they wanted to do something. So that's coming. And I'm kind of really looking forward to working with my family because honestly, I just have so much fun with them. But where were you from? Where did you grow up originally? Uh, I originally grew up in New York and Connecticut. 
uh, born just north of New York City, and then off to college in a very small town in Iowa, a town of 900 people. And then as soon as I graduated, uh, I hopped in my 63 VW bug and drove to California. It you had to become a California kid. Well, I did. I needed a place to train. I made it on my first Olympic team in 1972. Uh, while well, I was a senior at Graceland. And so as soon as I graduated that year, I had my cap and gown on and got my diploma, walked down the stairs, right to the parking lot, threw everything <laughs> I owned in the back of the 63 VW Bug, fired that baby up and heading for California. Were you a natural athlete growing up? No, <laughs> not even close. What got me started was in fifth grade in a gym class. Coach says, okay, this is what we're gonna do today. Go out to the parking lot. And he set up all these cones around the parking lot. And you had to run around the, the cones and come back. And he was gonna time you, boom. Wound up having the fastest time in the whole school. And it was really kind of the first time I had ever really done anything at school because I wasn't doing it in the classroom. I was a dyslexic kid. I look back on that time in my life. And I said, why did I do that? Why was I so obsessed? Here I was dyslexic, I obviously I, I had identity issues, I had all these things going through my head. Let's say I would have just been an average kid, I wouldn't have needed sports. Because of the issues that I had in my life, when sports came around, I needed it more than the next person. And I look at it and I think, you know, if I had not had all those issues, I probably never would have done what I did. And so I look at all these issues as, as really as a positive. You know, I saw you somewhere recently um, and you said you were happy. Is that still true? Yeah, of course, yeah. My kids are all doing phenomenally well. Um, they all love me. I got 18 grandchildren and 10 children and life's good. Those are real numbers. 18 grandchildren, you're not playing around. Oh, uh, well, the girls didn't play around. <laughs> I don't Actually, this is the first time in years that not one of them is pregnant or having a child. What, what kind of parent are you or were you? Probably the most important thing for a parent, lead by example, by the type of person you are. They observe that. You can tell your kids everything, you know, and at the time they stick their nose up and they say, what do you know, and this and that, and eventually they figure out. And maybe 10 years down the line, you see the result. And I've been very blessed. All my kids are all very entrepreneurial. I'm very, very proud of all of them. Yeah. What did you do after you won the Olympics? Like, I, I remember you on the cover of the Wheaties box. Was there a lot of money in being a decathlete at the time? How did you sustain through the 80s, the 90s, kind of pre, pre that, that kind yeah. of reality TV money? Well, first of all, 1976 was the highest rated Olympic Games of all time. 75% of the country was watching. The next morning I get up after it was over with, I walk into the bathroom, the medal sitting on the counter. I take the medal, I put it around my neck, and I look in the mirror and I go, what the hell did you do? Did I build this character up so big that I'm stuck with him for the rest of my life? You know, I had no money. Since it was still an amateur event, you couldn't make any money in the sport. And fortunately, a ABC TV the next day offered me a job because I was retired that day. I mean, I knew that would be my last meet. And I just kind of dove into work. Instead of diving into myself, I dove into work. Some people want to dream, but they're afraid to dream big. They're afraid to dream fearlessly. But clearly you as someone who won Olympic gold medals, became a TV star, has built big businesses. You've not been afraid. So like, what's the most interesting thing you've learned or you could teach someone else about how to dream fearlessly? Boy, because fear is uh, a big problem out there. Um, this is what I used to do in the old days with fear. And it's pretty much stayed with me and teach it to your kids. Um, fear can be like fire. Fire under control can be your best friend fire out of control, burn your house down. Well, fear is the same way. Fear can burn your house down, okay? So what do you do with it? I used to realize that, and especially started back in the training days and the competing days, and I've used it since, that fear can be your best, also your best motivating factor, okay? 
in my head, I would never let fear get in front of me, okay? I would always want fear spinning right around. I want fear right three feet behind me, okay? That's where I want to place my fear. I want fear pushing me into the heat of the battle. And I don't want it in front of me banging up against it. I don't want it fear slowing me down. I would tell my kids and I told every one of them, the ability to grow is directly related to the amount of insecurity you can take in your life. You have to love being in those insecure areas. I remember Kimberly one time, she had her first on camera where she actually had to go in front of a camera, look at the camera and read a teleprompter. And she, that morning she was scared to death. Oh my God, I'm so scared. And I, I gave her that line and I said, but this is where you want to live. This is where you want to be because after today, that'll be your new norm. You will get through this, you will do it. And people have to realize that we constantly have to push ourselves um, to live in those insecure areas where you're afraid, where you don't think you're gonna make it. You will survive, you're gonna get through it. You're gonna be smart, you're gonna do the best you can. Hopefully you win, maybe if you don't, you learn from it and you move on to the next one. But always learn to live in that, in that fearful area. Because to me, that always meant I'm doing the right thing. And this means something to me. Do you mind, I wanna do something that they call rapid fire. Caitlin, who's your best friend? Sophia, um, she lives at the house. Uh, she's my best buddy and we're together pretty much all the time. Uh, Caitlin, what's the best thing you've learned about love? I'm not good at it. <laughs> um, I think love is very important in your life. And I don't mean this in a conceited way, but number one, you got to love yourself. Okay? Even with all your faults, all the difficulties, we all have stuff in life. Okay? We all got things we got to deal with. Every individual is different. Okay? But the bottom line is you got to love life. After that, uh, finding a partner in life, extraordinarily important. You know, somebody, you be, somebody who, when you get together, you become more powerful and a better person in that relationship. Love is important in life, you know? But there's all kinds of different levels of love. Have you found that right life partner yet? Oh, no. I'm going to finish out the end of my days with all my kids. Hey, hey Caitlin, I so appreciate you being on. Uh, thank you so very much. And uh, I hope you'll come back and do it again. I hope this won't be the last time. You know, really interesting conversation with Caitlyn Jenner. Never met her before, uh, but loved hearing a little bit of her backstory, uh, remembering her experience as an athlete, remembering as I talked to her, not only what a good athlete she was, but she's a really good business person and entrepreneur. And then I didn't realize she had 10 kids and 18 grandkids. Like I knew obviously about Kylie and Kendall and Kim and, and Chloe and, and everybody else, but, but that says a lot. And it says a lot about what she's learned as a parent and that she's maintained that loving relationship, it says something about her as a person. Curious to see where she goes to from here. Clearly she got hit pretty hard by some of the early critiques, but who knows what happens in a new world. So let's stay tuned. I think next year we'll hear more from Caitlyn Jenner. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe, tell a friend, and try the whole conversation. Listen to the podcast. Hey, tune into the Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're gonna enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.